Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video of Fox Flicks on Joss Scorcher. Today we're checking out the top 10 gruesome Disney deaths. Let's see what's uh... Hmm, you know, I now wonder, is it gonna be villain deaths or hero deaths? It just says death. So hey, let's just hop in and see which character died the gr the Gruesomest? That's not a word. So I guess it would be had the worst death. There you go. Let's hop in. <laughs> we drew one of you dying because our teacher said it would be more dramatic. You know, oh, you boy. see a lot of these top 10 terrifying Disney deaths list, and I gotta be honest, they're really repetitive. Not only that, I mean, they're really yeah. soft hitting. Most of them feature deaths by gravity, and you don't actually see those characters die. The only yeah, exception is gruesome. Mufasa, and that one's more heart-wrenching than heart-stopping. So, I am yeah. here to correct this embarrassment and show people the times when Disney Ooh, deaths actually scarred people. I wonder if going to have the horn king from the Black Cauldron. Not including Marvel or Star Wars, those could easily get their own lists, and I got a solid idea who had one on the Star Wars list. Oh, I'm going geez. to warn you right now. Many of the Did deaths see on that? this list are got going to be half. fairly disturbing the closer we get to the top. There's one in here where I would go as far as saying it would be and should have been R-rated. I say this with utter sincerity, viewer discretion is advised. And before anyone asks, Brain Little Toaster is not on here. It was distributed by Disney, not created by them. Ah. Well, okay. Number 10. For a second, I thought that said Mortal Touchstone Pictures 10. was a film distribution Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Disney. It was basically an excuse for the studio to make more adult films without directly attaching the Disney label to it. So it makes some hmm. things muddy. Does Wait, Face Off count face as a off? Disney movie? What about Good Morning Vietnam? Sister Act? Starship Troopers? Well, here's how hmm. I'm choosing to look at it. If Disney clearly wanted its label to be associated with it, then I'm counting it. Plus, the fact okay. that Disney finds new creative ways to market this movie means it's got to count for something, right? So, uh, the, the Nightmare, Nightmare Before, Before Christmas, Christmas counts. Well, as a well, it should, because I don't think I'm a little saying it's a gorgeous film. Amazing and seamless stop I motion, never delightfully stop spooky it. imagery, and charmingly simple story. It's a film that helped put Tim Burton on the map and one that needs no introduction. But never. One anyway. And yet, despite the spooky visuals, there isn't a whole lot of dying in Halloween Town. The residents are mostly enamored with scaring people than actually truly hurting someone. They Save just want the scale. One. Yeah, you know what this one is. Yep. Now look what you Into the boiling oil with the bug man himself. Yep, that scene. The finale between Jack Bones Skellington and, and Oogie Squish. Boogie. Just when the demonic potato sex got the upper hand, Jack puts an end to his BS by pulling on a loose thread on his burlap sack skin, exposing the enormous yep. colony of insects inside that him. Make and him then up. he literally falls apart. What else is there to say? Imagine having your skin ripped off, falling to pieces, all your pieces slowly getting burned in a cauldron, and your last bit of consciousness being squished by Santa. What makes it yep. even worse is when the bugs start screaming. Seriously, the high-pitched, distorted wails of agony just make it even more unsettling. It's one and of those deaths that kill gets off a worse good. the more you think about it, which is especially true considering number nine. There will never be another oogie boogie. Or will there? Eh, we're not sure Our how next entry works. is Treasure Planet. Really? What the hell is that? Not that one. No, I'm talking I'm about the, what the hell criminally was underrated 2002 Disney flick. It's Disney's own retelling of the classic novel Treasure Island for oh. the third time. While the elements of the original book and are there, this retelling by. feels more like its own entity. With a gorgeous blend of CG and 2D animation, a gripping narrative, and a heartwarming development of Long John Silver and Jim Hawkins' relationship. Dang, this movie got so many things right, so how did it bomb at the box office? Oh. Oh. Right. Oh. Along with being okay. bored well, eye go. candy, Treasure Heavy Planet takes a few puddle. liberties with its science. For instance, that space has been replaced thing. with the Ethereum. Ah, so it wasn't always an Elder Scrolls crystal. Or <laughs> crypto. And oh. on. The Ethereum is essentially space, uh, uh, but with breathable air. Basically an ocean of air. So, do black holes still factor into this? It's devolving into a... A black hole! 
Well, yes. there you go. Yes, they do. They very much do, as we find out in one of the most suspenseful scenes in the film. All right, setting the event, because we're already seeing some big stakes. They narrowly escape from an enormous supernova and... Oh, oh no, boy. it's collapsing into a black hole. Okay, okay, don't panic. They got an escape plan. A mad escape plan, but still a plan. Oh no, Mr. Arrow's falling in. Oh, thank goodness. Jim's lifeline saved him. I think he can still make it out there. And then this bug oh. guy decides to cut him loose. Literally. Well, uh... That's pretty harrowing. Damn. Yeah, I had to dock a few points because we don't really see Arrow bite the dust, but if you knew how black holes really worked, trust me, you wouldn't want to. Not only would yeah. he undergo complete spaghettification as his limbs are horribly mangled and ripped apart, and there you there's go. also the final blast wave from the supernova that, for all we know, could have disintegrated him. I don't know about you, but that sounds like insult to literal injury to me. Oh, yeah. It Sometimes most definitely it's not always is. what you like, see that makes something disturbing. Damn. It's the horrible, horrible implications that keep you up at night. I mean, hell, have y'all ever seen that scene in uh, Futurama's world of one robot woman and just, like, pulled a, and then sucked in? That's what happens in a black hole. And dead. Yep. Oh crap, Native. hold on, crap. Sorry about that, I don't know how I missed that ad popping up. Just kind of came out of nowhere. But yeah, Clayton, dead by his own hand. Oh, Blade. Next. Wait. Wait, wait, was that little thing really all there was for number 8? 10, nine. yeah, wow. Five seconds, that's all Clayton is needed to show how evil his death was. How terrible, I mean. Damn! Josh ain't messing around. Oliver and Company is one of we those Disney that. films that's more on the obscure side, and that's not super surprising. It came out between the cult classic Great Mouse Detective and the franchise-defining Little Mermaid. That said, oh, it does have some okay, good aspects cool. going for it, like Billy Joel's banger of a song, Why Should I Worry, and the villain, Sykes. With all the talk about how the Horned King is the most underrated Disney villain, I feel like <laughs> this guy deserves a bit more attention. Sykes is the least I mean, most people Disney probably don't even villain know his in name. the entire canon, and I mean that in the absolute best way possible. Whenever he's on screen, the entire mood completely changes. It feels less like a Disney movie and more like an animated Martin Scorsese movie. Now, I lent you money. And I don't see it. Do you know what happens when I don't see my money, Fagan? People get Oh, hurt. yeah. Look at that. People like you get hurt. This is the same movie with singing dogs, right? Yeah. Anyways, in this yes, modern retelling, Sykes is a lone shark who one of our protagonists, Fagan, is in some hot water with. When the latter discovers that Oliver has been taken in by a rich family, he hatches a plan to hold him for ransom. However, he goes back on it yeah, when he realizes only to that find all his owner is just a little girl, Jenny. Unfortunately, it yep. backfires when Sykes just kidnaps her anyways. And there a bit goes. later, we get the big chase scene in the subway where the following happens. Electrocution! Wait, does that dog also get electrocuted? Oh, and let's not forget just straight up explosion. Damn, he ain't coming back yeah, ever. Yeah, he was willing to show two dogs dying via electrocution, one on screen. Okay, then Bill so, Sykes yeah. gets hit by a train and it's pretty visceral. Damn. You can see the light leave his eyes. It gets even worse when you realize, oh yeah, both Roscoe and DeSoto are still on the tracks, so they get electrocuted and run over by a train. Ooh. I gotta say, the setup for this action scene is so that. convoluted, I'm you'd sorry. think it was made for the express purpose of killing the villains off in this weirdly specific way. I mean, a car like clearly drives death. downstairs and can move on rails. Given the rest of the entries, you'll see why I'm pretty sure that's the case. Of course, that's only the second most disturbing moment in Oliver and Company. The most was this one. Some minor adjustments, darling. I just well, know he's doing is just moving plus. I mean, it's a dog that's very fluffy. 
Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a work of art. Oh, I love this movie. Crossing the realms between live action and animation and blending them together in an enticing and zany film It's a walk. classic. Basically, what the new Chip and Dale movie tried to be and fell short. Seriously, I haven't they watched that. They just made a straight up Chip and Dale movie. Instead, they got a nostalgia bait. As a Already, Roger <laughs> Rabbit's a uh, lot more mature Sonic. for a film of its <laughs> time. A lot of that stemming from the... Uh, <clears throat> obvious reasons. Oh, yeah. But partially because it wasn't afraid to get into some really disturbing scenes. Like, remember Judge Doom? AKA, what would happen if Christopher Lloyd became even more animated oh, and just yeah. started talking? Remember, Eddie? Father, when I killed your brother, 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 I talked you just. Know what? Surprisingly, like this that. creep is the least disturbing <laughs> thing to me. I Don't remember me that movie. His death was so definitely well. freaky and undeniably messed some viewers up as kids. Because, yeah, who wouldn't want to see a guy howling in agony while they're slowly being eaten by acid from bottom to top, am I right? Uh, hello, I know a lot of y'all probably expect me to go more into that, but there was another death that really traumatized me as a kid. And I think a few of you know which one. Oh, yeah, the clown suit is being forced into the ditch. Kid me Ooh. did not think <laughs> that was ink! <laughs> I... 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 I I thought, look at that. Look at that. Wait, wait, that wait. That is blood. That is. Wait, the squeaky shoe made it onto the list? <laughs> oh, okay, just, I'm gonna just keep this thing rolling because I was not even expecting that. The squeaky shoe, the freaking clown shoe made it onto the list. Let's move. It is honest to goodness blood. No, that is not ink. I refuse to believe that is ink. This is too smart of a movie. They knew exactly what they were doing. I feel like this scene should be talked about more because just why? That shoe did literally nothing. Look at it. It was just smiling and curling up to Doom's leg like a cat. I mean, yeah, this week was getting a little annoying, but the weasels are annoying. Don't see them swimming a dip. But the uh, dead judge doesn't care. He just one, grabs the shoe and them, slowly like, into dips it into the, the only uh, substance the on movie? earth that can kill a tomb. Even Eddie, the proud and self-titled tune No, hold on. Someone actually looked it up. Was it one or just two of the you know, uh, weasels that fell into the vat? You know, the giant thing that they were going to use to plow through the wall and just destroy all of uh, Cartoon City or whatever it's called. I was going to say, like, Inkington, but that is definitely not it. That sounds more like a map in Splatoon. Hater cringes at the sight. Inkington. And all the totally not, bad, not blood is just the icing on the overkilled cake. Yeah, you can try and hide behind the excuse that it's not blood if it isn't red trope, but the subtext begs to differ. They knew what they did. They knew that we know. It's brilliant, it's unsettling, and it's just plain grim. Fuck I mean, I Judge Doom, that. you don't need dip to kill a character. Just let this guy do it. He'd do it even faster. I don't even know who that is, so I don't get the joke completely. Let me know down in the comments who that was. The Black Cauldron. I never saw it. I only saw reviews of it. I have it on good authority that I'm really not missing much. That said, I watch a lot of YouTube videos about it. And in this day and age, Who that doesn't? totally counts. And if there's one thing I hear gets talked about a lot in a positive light, it's the villain. The Horned, the Horned King, King is considered King. an underrated gem among Disney's masters of mischief. I mean, and the whole movie's kind of honestly, underrated. Honestly, I don't get why. He looks and sounds scary, but he doesn't do anything other than walk around slowly and get duped by a bowl of water. I still well, don't understand forget why that he this guy became such a black huge talking point for the summon movie. His army of what the people should be actually talking about was how obvious the writer's horniness was. <laughs> but, okay, I think hey, I if there's see one why. part of him I can agree with, it's that his death always makes the rank as some of Disney's best, and for a good reason. Throughout the movie, the Horned King has been searching for the Black Cauldron in order is. to awaken his undead army. But there's a catch. The Black Cauldron has an insatiable hunger and must feed. And uh-oh, looks like it decided to munch on the king. Oh uh, boy. Let's see how he bites it. Does he get sucked Wait, in Jafar that... style and that's the end of it? Hold on. Doesn't it only start to eat him after... You know what? I have never seen a movie. I'm gonna shut the hell up and just watch this. Let's all just shut the hell up and watch this. <laughs> oh, crap. Hey, Ad. it's me. You're... We're back. Sorry about that. Dang. 
damn. Ooh, he gets picked apart like piranha feed. The cauldron tears him off flesh first, and before his bones get sucked into, he's set on fire. Not gonna lie, that's a freaking metal way to go out. If the rest of the movie had this much edge going for it, it would have been way more interesting, I bet. Shame a lot of those darker scenes got cut out to satiate Dizzy's hunger for a broader demographic. Yeah. They thought the cauldron was a glutton. But hey, at least we got this awesome scene to revel in. Fitting that the slowest Disney villain oh, yeah, dies just as slowly and painfully as he moves. <laughs> I have to say, that was actually kind of good. A great animation. All. The Difficult Pirates see, of the Caribbean good. movies. Based on one of Disney's most iconic rides and one of their best live action film series. The first one being arguably the best, the second and third being worthy continuations, and the fourth and fifth existing. I've never Naturally, watched Naturally, the series has seen its fair share of disturbing twists and turns, like, which earned it its PG-13 rating. Though, to be honest, I feel like the first one at least feels more like a basic PG, maybe the third one too, but the second, Dead Man's Chest, that's where things take a turn for the grim. Go a on. darker, more ominous tone about a corrupt businessman who vows to end the age of piracy and turn the sea into his personal capitalist empire. And he's not messing around. <laughs> Good Worst luck. of all, our boy Jack Sparrow finds himself on the run from one of the best Disney villains of all time, Davy, Davy Jones. Jones. You don't have to watch the movies to know who these characters are. Okay, yeah, Elephant in the Room. With his introduction came a whole lot of complicated subplots. At World's End didn't help in the least, and films 4 and 5 are beasts all their own. There were some hmm. ups, some downs, and memes to be had, but the ups were definitely ups. That ball wasn't planned. One of those planned. ups is definitely the Kraken. When Jones's invincible pet is on the run, it won't stop until Jack's debt is paid in blood. This Leviathan was built the heck up throughout the whole film, and it delivered. It decimated an innocent fishing boat just Again, because it had movies, Jack's hat on You can never go wrong it on a Kraken. It tore ship to smithereens and ate its entire crew to get at will just because he tricked Jones. Oh, but don't <laughs> worry, there are a few lucky ones. All they did is get their faces forcibly Ooh. ripped off by the beast's tentacles. That's terrible. I believe he's only playing. No doubt about it, the first chilling sequence with the Kraken is one of my favorite action oh, bits God. in all of cinema. The build-up, the horror, the music, all oh, this is so good! People are dying left and right, getting grabbed and dragged under by its massive tentacles. The this crew tries edifying. to fight back, but they never stood a chance. And when that organ sting hits, it's like a bell tolling for these doomed souls, while most of them forcibly slide down their demolished ship into the maw of this unholy beast, finally ending their suffering in a grisly way. Gosh oh, that dang, is. this scene is awesome! And to add an extra sense of tragedy, the only way to silence this monster's rampage is for Jack to face the beast head on, diving sword drawn into right the into belly of the mouth. beast, Look only at to be dragged to Davy Jones' locker with his beloved Black Pearl. Not that he really had a choice since Elizabeth left him to die to save the others, but uh, let's not split hair, shall we? Well, I'd say that was terrifyingly perfectly awesome. Well, time to talk about a Disney live-action remake. No, Which no, no, one? No, no, no. Which one? Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book has had a lot of adaptations over the years, both animated and live action. You're probably thinking, oh great, let's talk about the 2016 live action remake or one of the weird versions from the 90s. Okay, yes, we are going to talk about the live action version from 1994. And hold on to okay. your butts! This live this action what, Jungle Book movie is a vastly different beast from the animated version. Also the one from 1967. By that, I mean it's got some very disturbing bits in it. Seriously, like there what? are many, many different gruesome deaths in here, and they're treated with banality. Like, a guy banality? literally falls off a cliff into sharp rocks, and the response? What a shame. What a shame. Really. Yeah. Should we continue? Many of these could have Cold. made the list. Death by snake? Sure. Cold. Buried alive in a tomb? Ugh. But now, I think we all know the death that's getting in here. Quick, stand, Wilkins! It's sucking me! Stop! Come here, give me your hand! Stop my leg! Breathe! Stop your leg! Oh, God. Nope! What the hell I was that? I cannot believe oh, this God. movie was for kids, especially with that. Also, guess what? This horrifically slow death is still hand-waved afterwards. 
Well, let's not be discouraged by every little thing. What an yes. asshole! What the hell is with Just these people? Just waves off death by quicksand while loading a revolver! Even Ocelot's looking at him and saying WTF! Okay, <laughs> Agreed, Ocelot! Steven Sommers, same director as The Mummy. Yeah, it checks out. Only a man who directed a movie huh. where the term flesh-eating scarab beetles can also direct something this gruesome. Got nothing else to say. Okay. This scene is terrifying. No, full Wait, agreement. Am I scurrying you guys by showing these scenes back to back? Eh, yeah, maybe a little. Am I the bad guy? Thus began Josh's descent into <laughs> madness. No one knows if he recovered or if he was Josh, always like I don't like think this. you're a madman. One thing is for sure, he or really needs to stop watching Disney movies at 2 a.m. hyped on sugar and bacon. Wait, sugar and bacon? Huh. Interesting combination. Oh, another Christopher Lloyd movie! Hopefully one that's less scarring. My Favorite Martian is a fun movie. Sure, it's a little dated Wait, and some what? of the jokes didn't land great, but it has some imagination and whimsy. Like, gum that makes you change your species? Yeah. Bit weird, but hey, roll with it. But there's one gum that comes with a warning. The giant tentacle monster? Eh, just a casual <laughs> fluvian. No problem. But the Venox 7? Oh, Venux Martin's actually seven. scared of that one. Almost hmm. like it's a drug. Eh, ominous. Cut to later, our hero is getting beat up by guards, and no one's strong enough to overpower them. Until Lizzie is given the Venox 7 no. gum. No! and then transforms into... What the hell oh, is that? Crap. So, uh, super-powered alien girlfriend. The first guy is tossed and electrocuted. Uh, that's oh, yeah, bad. he's dead. And the second guy is chased and then... He's dead. We see him eating shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Down the hatch. She just ate him. Oh, and the scariest shit. part, she just spits out the gum. Cheery, whimsical music starts playing. And wait, that guard's still in there. Uh, unless I miss something, logically um, her stomach should be bulging right about now. Unless, oh gosh, was he instantly digested? So furries, transformation, and now boar. Disney's experimenting on us, I swear. Disney, I, 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 I don't even know what the hell to say. I'm lost. I'm honestly lost. The Incredibles sucked into a turbine. No blood, Classic. but we all know there was. Tangled, aged to dust. Pretty disturbing. Would have loved Decent. to see it not behind a veil and close it. What the fuck? good thing they didn't go all the way. A bug's life, eaten alive by baby birds. <laughs> Very karmic, especially because Kevin Spacey. Lion King, eaten alive by hyenas. Fun fact, hyena jaws can crush bone. Terrifying. Bambi, shot by Hunter. Pretty off-putting, considering we just heard her speak. Little Mermaid, impaled. The flashing Classic. skeleton really brings it all home, and now because I can... I've been impaled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to laugh at that. <laughs> Disneyland is a magical place. I love all the imaginative rides and attractions. It's not surprising that some of them even get made into movies. Some good. I'm not. One rather obscure ride, Mission to Mars, got an equally obscure movie, Mission to Mars. Huh, the I've ride itself of was, it. Eh, it was more of a documentary type attraction rather than a ride. Very educational, but still sparked some children's love of futuristics. So hmm. with the movie, are okay, we I'm getting listening. a sort of sciency space adventure documentary? Eh, kinda. Now before you say that's a touchstone movie. Oh, okay, so I guess Nightmare Before Christmas doesn't count as a Disney movie anymore. Besides, this title was personally requested by the Walt Disney Corporation. And so look at that. I say it counts. Oh, You're it came out page? a year before me. I, the whole hmm. movie is pretty cheesy. Lots of expository hmm. dialogue. Also, fulfilling some alien puzzle about our destiny as humans huh. to travel through the stars. Cool. Eh, audiences weren't impressed. Though, for some reason, this movie left a huge impact on people's memories. A faint I've never even echo seen it of something now. imaginative in the back of their minds. Like, honestly, Cold. I've never thought of this. And no one knows why. Oh, yeah, that intro sequence. What so the in a hell? mission to Mars, uh -huh, Don Cheadle and his crew are searching for water on its surface. When they get there, they run into a storm and... Okay, I'm just going to show this scene uncut. What the... Oh my god! No, 
Disney. No, oh, bad, hell, bad Disney. There's a Lovecraftian horror. Get into my PG Disney movie. Guys, I'm oh serious. My God. This isn't 80s PG. This film was released in 2000. The first astronaut gets axed by a rock to the face. Oh, Pre-Dark <laughs> enters her soup now for the pressure change of her face was a completely caved in. Don Cheadle gets slowly sucked down into the surface. Hope no one's claustrophobic. Next, the two other astronauts scream in terror as they're sucked into this howling brown abyss. If you look closely, oh my God. you can actually see the moment where the second guy dies. In the actual story, <laughs> this is a sentient mm, alien booby trap. This isn't just some freak storm. This was something designed to chase people down and kill them. That is God, beyond that's terrifying. fucked up. I'm sorry, where was the outrage for this death, concerned mothers of America? He's ripped apart! My TV god! Is fine as long it's as like they just put him in a blender! I'm Josh Scorcher sitting here just wondering how did the actual horror themed ride get the most kid friendly movie? Cut! I'm gonna answer that just real quick, Joss. I'm gonna say it's because it's got Eddie Murphy. Now, that's what I'm gonna end off today's video. So, I want you all to remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original video will be in the description below. So, remember to support the original creator and all they do. And I'll see all of you folks after I get some therapy. Spock signing out. Peace.